Chapters 1 through 19 of Songs of Innocence by William Blake. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Chapter 1 Introduction Piping down the valleys wild, piping songs of pleasant glee, on a cloud I saw a child and he laughing said to me pipe a song about a lamb so i piped with merry cheer piper pipe that song again so i piped he wept to hear drop thy pipe thy happy pipe sing thy songs of happy cheer so i sang the same again while he wept with joy to hear piper sit thee down and write in a book that all may read so he vanished from my sight, and I plucked a hollow reed. And I made a rural pen, and I stained the water clear, and I wrote my happy songs, every child may joy to hear. End of chapter 1 Chapter 2 The Shepherd How sweet is the shepherd's sweet lot! From the morn to the evening he stays. He shall follow his sheep all the day, and his tongue shall be filled with praise. For he hears the lamb's innocent call, and he hears the ewe's tender reply. He is watching while they are in peace, for they know when their shepherd is nigh. End of chapter 2 Chapter 3 The Echoing Green The sun does arise, and make happy the skies, the merry bells ring, to welcome the spring, the skylark and thrush, the birds of the bush, sing louder around to the bell's cheerful sound, while our sports shall be seen on the echoing green. Old John, with white hair, does laugh away care, sitting under the oak, among the old folk. They laugh at our play, and soon they all say, such, such were the joys, when we all, girls and boys, in our youth time were seen, on the echoing green till the little ones weary no more can be merry the sun does descend and our sports have an end round the laps of their mothers many sisters and brothers like birds in their nest are ready for rest and sport no more seen on the darkening green end of chapter three chapter four the lamb little lamb who made thee dost thou know who made thee gave thee life and bid thee feed by the stream and o'er the mead gave thee clothing of delight softest clothing woolly bright gave thee such a tender voice making all the vales rejoice little lamb who made thee dost thou know who made thee little lamb i'll tell thee little lamb i'll tell thee he is called by thy name for he calls himself a lamb. He is meek, and he is mild. He became a little child. I a child, and thou a lamb, we are called by his name. Little lamb, God bless thee. Little lamb, God bless thee. End of chapter 4 Chapter 5 The Little Black Boy My mother bore me in the southern wild, and I am black, but oh, my soul is white. White as an angel is the English child, But I am black, as if bereaved of light. My mother taught me underneath a tree, And, sitting down before the heat of day, She took me on her lap and kissed me, And pointed to the east, began to say, Look on the rising sun, there God does live, And gives his light, and gives his heat away, And flowers and trees and beasts and men receive Comfort in mourning joy in the noonday and we are put on earth a little space that we may learn to bear the beams of love and these black bodies and this sunburnt face is but a cloud and like a shady grove for when our souls have learned the heat to bear the cloud will vanish we shall hear his voice saying come out from the grove my love and care and round my golden tent like lambs rejoice thus did my mother say and kissed me and thus i say to little english boy 
when i from black and he from white cloud free and round the tent of god like lambs we joy i'll shade him from the heat till he can bear to lean in joy upon our father's knee and then i'll stand and stroke his silver hair and be like him and he will then love me end of chapter five chapter six the blossom mary mary sparrow under leaf so green a happy blossom sees you swift as arrow seek your cradle narrow near my bosom pretty pretty robin under leaf so green a happy blossom hears you sobbing sobbing pretty pretty robin near my bosom end of chapter six chapter seven the chimney sweeper when my mother died i was very young and my father sold me while yet my tongue could scarcely cry weep 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 so your chimneys i sweep and in soot i sleep there's little tom dacre who cried when his head that curled like a lamb's back was shaved so i said hush tom never mind it for when your head's bare you know that the soot cannot spoil your white hair and so he was quiet in that very night as tom was a-sleeping he had such a sight that thousands of sweepers dick joe ned and jack were all of them locked up in coffins of black and by came an angel who had a bright key and he opened the coffins and let them all free then down a green plain leaping laughing they run and wash in a river and shine in the sun then naked and white all their bags left behind they rise upon clouds and sport in the wind and the angel told tom if he'd be a good boy he'd have god for his father and never want joy and so tom awoke and we rose in the dark and got with our bags and our brushes to work though the morning was cold tom was happy and warm so if all do their duty they need not fear harm end of chapter seven chapter eight the little boy lost father father where are you going oh do not walk so fast speak father speak to your little boy or else i shall be lost the night was dark no father was there the child was wet with dew the mire was deep and the child did weep and away the vapour flew end of chapter eight chapter nine the little boy found the little boy lost in the lonely fen led by the wandering light began to cry but god ever nigh appeared like his father in white he kissed the child and by the hand led and to his mother brought who in sorrow pale through the lonely dale the little boy weeping sought end of chapter nine chapter ten laughing song when the green woods laugh with the voice of joy and the dimpling stream runs laughing by when the air does laugh with our merry wit and the green hill laughs with the noise of it when the meadows laugh with lively green and the grasshopper laughs in the merry scene when mary and susan and emily with their sweet round mouths sing ha ha he when the painted birds laugh in the shade where our table with cherries and nuts is spread come live and be merry and join with me to sing the sweet chorus of ha ha he end of chapter ten chapter eleven a song sweet dreams form a shade o'er my lovely infant's head sweet dreams of pleasant streams by happy silent moony beams sweet sleep with soft down weave thy brows an infant crown sweet sleep angel mild hover o'er my happy child sweet smiles in the night hover over my delight sweet smiles mother's smile all the live long night beguile sweet moans dove-like sighs chase not slumber from thine eyes sweet moan sweeter smile 
all the dove-like moans beguile. Sleep, sleep, happy child, all creation slept and smiled. Sleep, sleep, happy sleep, while o'er thee doth mother weep. Sweet babe, in thy face holy image I can trace. Sweet babe, once like thee thy maker lay, and wept for me. Wept for me, for thee, for all, when he was an infant small. Thou his image ever see, heavenly face that smiles on thee. Smiles on thee, on me, on all, who became an infant small. Infant smiles are his own smiles, heaven and earth to peace beguiles. End of chapter 11. Chapter 12. Divine Image. To mercy, pity, peace, and love, all pray in their distress, and to these virtues of delight return their thankfulness. For mercy, pity, peace, and love is God our Father dear, and mercy, pity, peace, and love is man his child in care. For mercy has a human heart, pity a human face, and love the human form divine, and peace the human dress. Then every man of every clime that prays in his distress, prays to the human form divine, love, mercy, pity, peace. And all must love the human form, in heathen, Turk, or Jew, where mercy, love, and pity dwell, their God is dwelling too. End of chapter 12. Chapter 13. Holy Thursday. T'was on a holy Thursday, their innocent faces clean, came children walking two and two in red and blue and green. Gray-headed beetles walked before with wands as white as snow, till into the high dome of Paul's they like the Thames waters flow. Oh, what a multitude they seemed, these flowers of London town! Seated in companies they sit, with radiance all their own. The hum of multitudes was there, but multitudes of lambs, thousands of little boys and girls raising their innocent hands. Now like a mighty wind they raised to heaven the voice of song, or like harmonious thunderings, the seats of heaven among. Beneath them sit the aged man, wise guardians of the poor. Then cherish pity, lest you drive an angel from your door. End of chapter 13. Chapter 14. Night. The sun descending in the west, the evening star does shine. The birds are silent in their nest, and I must seek for mine, the moon like a flower, in heaven's high bower, with silent delight, sits and smiles on the night. Farewell, green fields and happy grove, where flocks have taken delight, where lambs have nibbled, silent moved the feet of angels bright. Unseen they pour blessing, and joy without ceasing, on each bud and blossom, and each sleeping bosom. They look in every thoughtless nest, where birds are covered warm. They visit caves of every beast, to keep them all from harm. If they see any weeping, that should have been sleeping, they pour sleep on their head, and sit down by their bed. When wolves and tigers howl for prey, they pitying stand and weep, seeking to drive their thirst away, and keep them from the sheep. But if they rush dreadful, the angels, most heedful, receive each mild spirit, new worlds to inherit. And there the lion's ruddy eyes shall flow with tears of gold, and pitying the tender cries, and walking round the fold, saying, Wrath by his meekness, and by his health sickness, are driven away from our immortal day. And now beside thee, bleating lamb, I can lie down and sleep, or think on him who bore thy name, graze after thee, and weep. For washed in life's river, my bright mane for ever shall shine like the gold as I guard o'er the fold. End of chapter 14. Chapter 15. Spring. Sound the flute. Now it's mute. 
birds delight day and night nightingale in the dale lark in sky merrily 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 to welcome in the year little boy full of joy little girl sweet and small cock does crow so do you merry voice infant noise merrily merrily to welcome in the year little lamb here i am come and lick my white neck let me pull your soft wool let me kiss your soft face merrily merrily to welcome in the year end of chapter fifteen chapter sixteen nurse's song when the voices of children are heard on the green and laughing is heard on the hill my heart is at rest within my breast and everything else is still then come home my children the sun is gone down and the dews of night arise come come leave off play and let us away till the morning appears in the skies no no let us play for it is yet day and we cannot go to sleep besides in the sky the little birds fly and the hills are all covered with sheep well well go and play till the light fades away and then go home to bed the little ones leaped and shouted and laughed and all the hills echoed end of chapter sixteen chapter seventeen infant joy i have no name i am but two days old what shall i call thee i happy am joy is my name sweet joy befall thee pretty joy sweet joy but two days old sweet joy i call thee thou dost smile i sing the while sweet joy befall thee end of chapter seventeen chapter eighteen a dream once a dream did weave a shade o'er my angel-guarded bed that an emmet lost its way where on grass methought i lay troubled wildered and forlorn dark benighted travel-worn over many a tangle spray all heart-broke i heard her say o oh, my children do they cry do they hear their father sigh now they look abroad to see now return and weep for me pitying i dropped a tear but i saw a glow-worm near who replied what wailing white calls the watchman of the night i am set to light the ground while the beetle goes his round follow now the beetle's hum little wanderer hie thee home end of chapter eighteen chapter nineteen on another's sorrow can i see another's woe and not be in sorrow too can i see another's grief and not seek for kind relief can i see a falling tear and not feel my sorrow's share can a father see his child weep nor be with sorrow filled can a mother sit and hear an infant groan an infant fear no no never can it be never never can it be and can he who smiles on all hear the wren with sorrow small hear the small bird's grief and care hear the woes that infants bear and not sit beside the next pouring pity in their breast and not sit the cradle near weeping tear on infant's tear and not sit both night and day wiping all our tears away oh no never can it be never never can it be he doth give his joy to all he becomes an infant small he becomes a man of woe he doth feel the sorrow too think not thou canst sigh a sigh and thy maker is not by think not thou canst weep a tear and thy maker is not year oh he gives to us his joy that our grief he may destroy till our grief is fled and gone he doth sit by us and moan end of chapter nineteen and also the end of songs of innocence by william blake